This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we are going to build an automatic packet reporting system unit for the Emergency Communications Trailer, APRS. If you haven't used it, it's a wonderful technology for reporting position and a lot of other good information. And we're going to utilize this in the Emergency Communications Trailer when it is out in the field using off-the-shelf parts. This week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, welcome back to El Cara Ham Radio, where this week we're going to be building an APRS tracking system for the emergency communications trailer. APRS has been out for about 25 years plus, and it's great for uh, uh, tracking units out in the field, direction, speed, altitude, and it even can be plotted on a map, which we'll see in part two. We're also going to be using some off-the-shelf parts, ICOM radio, and the Bionics line of both tiny tracker controllers and GPS receivers. So let's get into the build. Here we can see a tiny tracker 3 plus that has already been programmed for the call sign and other information about our club. As you can see there as we flip it over, this is an older unit, a tiny tracker 3 plus, but it still works wonderfully. I believe they have tiny tracker 4s out today. Now what we're going to do is we're going to begin the cabling process. I'm always amazed how AC4DM can take just regular serial cables and make them into the communications uh, units that we need for radios and other equipment such as controllers for repeaters and so forth. So we're looking at our pinouts here on the serial cable that we're then going to put onto a bridge that allows us to connect the radio to the tiny tracker and the GPS unit. So he's putting together a cable here where we're putting on the shell to protect the wire bundle there going into that 9-pin connector. He's accumulated so many parts over the years and building cables is something that he's done many, many times because sometimes you need a custom cable to do exactly what you want. And so he's very used to this. And if you'll notice, the wires are already exposed on the other end. We'll hit those in a few minutes. So now we're kind of just laying out on the wooden board here and the uh, cable tie system just to see where we want to start placing things and then out comes the hand drill. Some of you that are older, you'll uh, recognize this type of drill. You don't see them very much, but they're great in woodworking shops. And now we're installing the connector bridge onto the board. Now you can see the ICOM is already mounted to this piece of wood. This is just a piece of lumber that gives it a nice base so that everything will be nice and compact but stable. And now we go ahead and drill a couple of more holes to give us some pre-holes so we don't crack the wood and we're affixing that cable management anchor. And we're exposing a little bit more wire on the serial cable and we're going to be removing some of that shielding as we go about that. Each one of those colored wires are going to go to a specific uh, position on the bridge that supplies power or may provide audio in and out to the radio. And you can see the tiny tracker is already affixed to the end of this cable to kind of give you an idea of how it's going to be connecting. These bridges are a great way to tie in different components, whether it's a repeater controller or in this case an APRS controller. In comes the, uh, the little tie and uh, we're going to anchor this uh, serial cable with the tiny tracker affixed to it to this anchor point and then we're going to bring the wires over so that we can begin to attach them to the posts on this bridge. So again looking at our pinouts we want to make sure that we put the right wires in the right positions and you'll notice there the post has about seven positions and uh, We'll need to make sure that we affix each of those wires in the right place. We actually don't need all of them, we just need a few of them. This is the GPS unit from Bionics, uh, the GPS receiver, and this will actually go outside on top of the uh, emergency communications trailer so they can actually pick up the GPS signal and then report that to the APRS system. So we're also showing how we're going to route that. Going ahead and 
tightening down the tiny tractor to the serial cable to get it ready for positioning on the board here. And again, we'll be able to replicate this project later when we want to have APRS units out in the field. We can build these and put them in people's cars for those that don't have APRS units built into their radios. Alrighty, so now we move to putting some connectors on the ends of those wires on the serial cable that we're then going to affix and install on the bridge. And here we're working with our first cable. Again, we have a pinout diagram that we've already created to make sure that we're putting them in the right places. So AC4DM is going to loosen and then tighten down this post. And you can see we're putting it in position number one. It's either position number one or position number seven. And as we have gone ahead and affixed all the wires to the bridge, we're now going to bundle up these wires to make them nice and neat so that they don't hang out and won't grab on anything. And we've got some waxed line here that we're going to use. We use this type of uh, line to tie up uh, these bundles um, on many different projects. If you go back and look at our GMRS repeater build, we use this same wax line for this purpose. Now we're showing you a Cat5 connection coming out of the radio and also coming out over towards the bridge. And we're going to use this to tie all of the components together, both on the radio for transmit and receive for the APRS signal. And so we're just exposing the wires on the other end of this connector uh, on this wire. And then we're going to test for continuity and make sure that we're getting 12 volts on two of those wires. We need to find the ground and we need to find the positive lead. Sure enough, we're looking for about 8 volts, 7.5, 8 volts, and we didn't get it on the first pair of wires that we tried, so we tried a different pair, and sure enough, 7.5 volts, exactly what we need. So we're going to begin to start taking the wires and just double checking that they are what we hope they are from the pinouts, and then we're going to start putting connectors on the ends of these so that we can affix these to the bridge as well. We've already got the tiny tractor uh, built into the bridge or connected to the bridge. Now we've got to connect the elements of the radio for transmit and receive to the bridge. So here we've got everything connected and we're making sure that the, the radio actually is transmitting when the GPS tracker, the tiny tracker actually transmits. We got a red light, so we're good. So uh, again, we don't need all of the wires, but we need several of them to make sure that transmit and receive is going to work. And mainly here, we're doing uh, transmit out the radio. The uh, tiny tracker is doing the receiving from the GPS unit. So we're fixing a blue wire off of this Cat5 connector and uh, making sure that that's in the right position. And we also need to supply power to the tiny tracker itself. So we're making an adjustment to the 12 volt power supply coming into the radio and then adding the wires for the tiny tracker power to the same power supply. So this will make sure that everybody has power on this particular project. And now we start connecting that particular power to the bridge where we're supplying 12 volts to the tiny tracker and to the GPS going through the tiny tracker. Alrighty, so we've got our wires in place. We're now double checking that the tiny tracker is actually looking for a GPS signal. Now, we're in a Faraday cage in AC4DM's uh, garage here, so it's not going to actually be able to pick up a satellite, but we want to make sure that it's got power. It's trying to acquire a GPS signal. You can see the lights flashing there. The blinking green means that it is still trying to acquire a GPS satellite. When that goes solid, it means it has found one and will report that to the APRS system. So we need to go ahead and add in one more cable here coming off the back of the radio and also incorporate that into the bridge. So we need to measure to length, cut, and then expose the wires, put some connectors on the end, and then affix it to the bridge. So KK4 KTV has measured and we're clipping. So again, measure twice, cut once. So we've gone ahead and exposed the uh, inner conductor as well as the, uh, the ground for that particular cable. And we're affixing it to the right positions once again on the bridge.
And we've just about got it now. Folks, these are great projects to come along and build as a club. It gets many people involved. You learn about electronics. You learn about projects and building things. And you get a lot of use out of many of these projects. This APRS unit uh, can be positioned in the MCOM trailer, but it could actually be used anywhere. And now we'll have a good video record of exactly how to put one of these together in the future. So now we're just uh, doing some cable management here. And you can see we've just about got everything connected. We still have some wires sticking out <laughs> in the top right corner, but those are the ones we didn't need it. Uh, we only needed just a, a few wires coming out of the tiny tractor over to the bridge. And so we'll clean that up a little bit later. And here's the grimace shot just to show that I did actually get involved. A little more cable management on the other corner for the GPS, and this is for strain relief. We don't want the GPS unit to be pulled off of the tiny tracker, so we're anchoring that there in the corner. And then we took it outside to test. A little bit of rain this day, so I've got the audio turned way down, and we've actually got the GPS unit too close to the antenna, as we found out later. But let's listen in. Yeah, but it's uh, transmitting every... You hear it there? Yeah. yeah it's and the red light's coming clicking. on. So coming up next in part two, we will take the new APRS unit out into the field and show you how we can track where the emergency communication trailer is going and where it is set up. Next time on El Cara Ham Radio.